standing at Pittsburgh's commercial center on Smithfield Street, you're surrounded by a cluster of imposing buildings that recall Pittsburgh's preeminence in the early years of the 20th century. Looking up at the Doric columns of the Oliver Building, the austere classicism of the Mellon Bank Building, or the modern aluminum facade of the Regional Enterprise Building, you know that you are in the very heart of Pittsburgh. And because people dared to believe it was possible, a lush oasis springs up in the midst of these architectural landmarks. A place where you can find refreshment in the spray of sparkling fountains and the sound of splashing water. Now, following a two-year, $10 million restoration, Pittsburghers who have worked to preserve Mellon Square Park are ready for the grand reopening, eager to celebrate the rebirth of a masterpiece. World War II was over, but the fight to transform smoky Pittsburgh into a livable city was just getting started. Severe pollution and traffic congestion threatened the city's economic future. Returning to Pittsburgh after his war service, financier Richard King Mellon decided to tackle the problem, forging a powerful alliance with Pittsburgh's mayor, David L. Lawrence. Lawrence and Mellon shared a vision for Pittsburgh. They dreamed of reclaiming the historic land located at Pittsburgh's point and turning it into a great public space. And they wanted to transform the city's commercial center. At that time, a decaying collection of buildings and parking lots filled the block between the William Penn Hotel and the Oliver Building. Lawrence and Mellon dreamed of replacing the shabby structures with a grand public square on the order of New York's Rockefeller Center. To help realize this audacious vision, Lawrence and Mellon hired James Mitchell and Dolan Ritchie, Pittsburgh's leading modern architects. And to collaborate on landscape design, Mitchell and Ritchie turned to two Pittsburgh brothers, John and Philip Simons. Their inspired design put a city park on top of a six-story parking garage. Three Mellon Foundations donated $4 million to the city of Pittsburgh to support the project, worth about $35 million today. Mayor Lawrence turned over the first shovel of dirt in groundbreaking ceremonies in September 1953. Afterward, Richard King Mellon remarked, this is the most important day of my life in Pittsburgh. Two years in the making, the new plaza opened on October 18, 1955. Pittsburghers had never seen anything like it. A dramatic cascading waterfall drew them up the grand staircase from street level. At the plaza level, they arrived at a modern-day oasis, where an arrangement of geometric forms created a sense of order on the platform. The masterful design broke up the huge rectangle into what felt like a series of small rooms, providing places where you could be alone, as well as places where you could enjoy the company of others. At Sarah Mellon Scaife's suggestion, Simons and Simons developed a mesmerizing paving pattern that almost seemed to dance at your feet. Mellon Square's exquisite layering of form, pattern, and color have made it an icon of modernist design. And that's one of the reasons the American Planning Association named Mellon Square one of the 10 greatest public spaces in America. But by the end of the 20th century, much of the original elegance of Mellon Square had been lost. The lush landscaping was almost completely gone. Signs of water damage were everywhere. The fountains weren't working, and Mellon Square had started to feel a little seedy and maybe even a little unsafe. 
Mellon Square's deterioration seemed to ripple out to the surrounding buildings, many of which stood largely vacant. The entire area was in decline, and the city's leaders were taking notice. The pavements are deteriorating. There are steps that you don't really want to walk down. Uh, at least uh, you wouldn't want to walk down at night. That says something about a city. I think it's the kind of thing we don't want to say. And I think it's worth taking the things that we already have and putting them back to the way they were supposed to be. The effort to put Mellon Square back the way it was supposed to be took off almost three years ago when the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy hosted groundbreaking ceremonies for the $10 million restoration, launching a flurry of activity. A new terrace above Smithfield Street increased usable space by 15%. Special soils were constructed to capture rainwater and minimize runoff. Thousands of new plantings helped to restore the look and feel of the original landscape design. The fountains were fitted with new water lines and high efficiency pumps to drastically reduce the use of water and electricity. Even the giant bronze basins were painstakingly removed and transported back to their original manufacturer, Pittsburgh's Matthews International, to be restored and repatinated. Reclaiming its great heritage and transforming the heart of downtown Pittsburgh Mellon Square Park is again ready to welcome visitors to a refreshing oasis. By establishing a fund for long-term maintenance, today's visionary leaders have guaranteed that Mellon Square will never again be allowed to fall into a tragic state of disrepair. Once again, Mellon Square has become the visual symbol of our city's rebirth. Well, I'm looking here at a building, uh, the former Mellon Bank building that was vacant for years and is now occupied. I'm, I know there are two buildings on this square that lost their major tenants in the last few years. They're now coming back. One is a hotel under construction and one is nearing full occupancy. This square has been very important to the, the revitalization of everything that's around. Mellon Square Park is one of the city's greatest works of art, a masterpiece that doesn't hang on the wall of a museum, but stands outside in the open, completely free, a gift to all the people of Pittsburgh. <laughs>